It's winter time, way too cold to stay in the shop and record. So here we are, home and cozy with Christmas tree, fire on, all cozy to spend the next hour, yes, an hour with you. Here we go. I put my speedos on just in case. Your tickets, please. Tickets. Yeah. Hello, welcome back. Good to see you all again and good to see you all looking so cosy. Stuart here from The Woolpatch, a yarn and fabric haberdashery shop in Long Melford, a UK. Except I'm not in my shop. Uh, I am at home. It was way, way too cold in the shop to record. It's a dear little bricks and mortar shop, but it's stone and there is no insulation there whatsoever. So in the summer, it's beautifully cool, but in the winter, it is freezing. So yes, uh, here I am home, uh, Christmas tree on, fire on, all cozy, and I hope you are cozy too, because we're going to be spending the next hour together. It's gonna to be brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for your kind words on my last special vlog where we took the same format but I told you the story of my granddad who was a desert rat. Your comments uh, were just humbling to read and it was fascinating hearing some of your stories too, uh, which I knew it would be, but thank you for taking the time to write those comments and to, and to join in. And also thank you to our new subscribers who have come along over the last couple of months. The whole point of the vlog is to uh, promote the shop and make awareness of the shop. And during our vlogs, I will talk to you about new products in, new yarns, new fabrics, maybe new projects. We get to share projects too with the gallery. So hopefully new subscribers, you'll send in your pictures too. Uh, we've got a bumper packed gallery coming up. Um, and it's just, it's just about uh, supporting local as well, if you can. Saying that, many of you are not local and you are miles away from uh, uh, South Africa to uh, Australia to uh, America, California, Seattle, you're, you're everywhere. So it's, uh, it's a very, very small world here on YouTube, uh, but a huge, huge community. So thank you very much for coming back, as well as uh, all, all, all you regulars who keep coming back and joining in. I love the comments and I love reading everything that you get up to and then also following you on Instagram. So what always happens when we start a vlog, there is normally a knit or a, a sewing feature to look at and here it is. <sighs> I can't wait to show you <laughs> the Sidewinder beanie using Malabrigo Rasta. Isn't it a cool hat? But more importantly, isn't it a cool yarn? Just look at it. Uh, it is just phenomenal. I have been a fan of Malabrigo for a long while, but have um, never, I, I suppose, had the time to get it in. Uh, I, I look at it and then before you know it, I've gone somewhere else and I've got something else in. And uh, But uh, I, the reason why I finally got it in is because, uh, they are based in Uruguay, a small family. Well, they're not small anymore, really, but they are still a family business. And they hand dye yarn, which you can see here beautifully. And uh, they, they, are, they distribute it everywhere, everywhere around the world. But for Europe, their distribution base is in the UK. 
perfect. So you know I was telling you about all the issues that we've had since Brexit, ordering yarns in from Europe with customs, with shipping, with uh, them sitting in, in customs for ages uh, with extra shipping bills and customs. Oh, it's a, it's a right mess. I've been trying to find yarns in Britain, British yarns, uh, or yarns that are stored in Britain uh, and distributed elsewhere. And well, Malabry goes one. So really, really lucky because if I want to order yarn, it literally comes from Surrey. Uh, so it's not, not, not got far to come at all. So uh, it, it was just uh, the time, it was right to, to get it in. So I have started with Rasta, super chunky. I'm a big fan of super chunky. You know, I've talked to you many times about uh, super chunky yarns. We've had Rowan Big Wool in. Um, and you've seen me knit this Sidewinder pattern using Rowan Big Wool. This is using one hank, and I have used um, an Avisario, and just, oh, isn't it fabulous? It's kind of bright pinks, purples, tiny bit of aqua in there, and teal, and it's just wonderful, but, it, I think it's just finished off wonderfully with my love of fur beanie. You can mix the Rowan Big Wool with the Rasta. Um, and there are, there are many patterns um, like this on Instagram. And if you follow uh, Aspen Leaf Knits, Ginny, um, uh, you will see so many different patterns where she's used Malabrigo and a, a solid and a, a sort of a, a, a print, a, a, a hand dye. So what I was thinking of doing was using Rowan Big Wall as the solid and then Malabrigo uh, um, uh, for, the, for the color change. So that's my next project. <laughs> Go check Ginny out, Aspen Leaf Knits. It's called the Sidewinder Beanie. You could easily do it in a day, a couple of evenings, and uh, it's stocking stitch, garter stitch, and this wonderful, what we call twist stitch. It's just a, an extra little bit of um, excitement in between your stocking stitch and garter stitch. So it's really fun and it knits up so quickly. Um, so let me show you. So that's what it looks like in the Malabrigo Rasta. I chose six colors to stop with Rasta. So there's the Anniversario. A darker one in a sort of similar colorway, purples and teals. We have Zazamora. You see those purples there, pops of teal and blue, but it's very gray and dark as well. Then we go into, I think these might be my favorite colors when I see it in yarn. I like to call it the West Ham colors. It's kind of burgundy and pale blues. It's called Lotus. There we go. So there's those pops of pale blue and then the burgundies in between. Ah, oh, it's just beautiful. Then we go into the greens and olives. Uh, what's this one? Indicita? Look at that. Pops of olive green with some turquoise too. And then some more olive green there. And then the odd bit of purple in there too. Look at that. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Arquita. So you've got browns, olives. Bits of bright green there. But it's very much... Uh, in that grassland, heath, heathery sort of look. And then mm, one which I think I shouldn't have got, but um, uh, almost a solid. This is a solid gray, but because it's hand dyed, you have got different uh, tonals of gray there. 
So I think that one might have been perhaps a wrong choice there. But grey is so popular at the moment, you just see it everywhere. The Sidewinder beanie with a brand new yarn from Malabrigo. Mm. Oh, love it. If you've used Malabrigo before, particularly Rasta, let us know in the comments below. Uh, if you can point out any patterns that you've used with it, uh, then again, let us know in the comments. It's lovely to be able to share with you all our, our, our community uh, because it's a lovely yarn. And if you've had success with specific patterns, then let us know below. Talking about community, uh, the community just gets more and more, well, worldwide, but actually uh, also uh, in the village, it gets more and more close as I find out more about people in the village too. So I would like to introduce you to Dr. Paul Garcia. <laughs> And his wife Mary would come in the shop lots. Mary would buy lots of yarn each time, and we would just talk about the vlog. Uh, they they're big followers of the vlog, and they would say very nice things about the show. And in conversation, I found out that Paul does bookbinding, and he was very interested in the Lavin and Blue. If you don't already know, uh, new followers, I know you you returning ones, you hear me all the time talking about Lavin and Blue. Lavin and Blue is a yarn that I dye with woad. Uh, using influences from Lavenham, uh, a little village near me in the shop, which is Long Melford, uh, in the 16th century, pretty much made it one of the most richest villages in the UK. Now I dye yarn uh, with woad and it goes blue. And he just sort of said, oh, I wonder if you can dye some linen for me. And I went, well, of course. Next time I set up a vat, I'll just pop your linen in and I'll dye it. And that's what I did. He gave me a hank of linen and I popped it in and gave it back to him. And uh, then a couple of weeks later, he popped back in with the most amazing gift for me. And here it is. There is my own Lavenham Blue journal notepad. But it's this bit which is beautiful. So that's what the linen was for. It was to join the paper together to make a signature. And then those signatures, well, there's a lot of them there, uh, get put together to make my book. Look at that. And then you can see there the join. This is going to be a most wonderful knitting book. My, my journal for all my notes, my row counting, uh, my favorite patterns and so forth, all in one place. But isn't it wonderful? This is blue leather as well. And look, he's even made a Barbara there. Fantastic, so thank you, Paul. Hey, what about that? The community. So just from chatting away with his wife about wool and buying wool and then chatting with him about the vlog, you then find interests, commonalities, uh, find out that he likes book binding and then before you know it, I've dyed him some love and blue, not really thinking of what was going to come out of it. Uh, and there we have a book. And he's done more than that too. <gasps> And this is where you might be excited. Maybe last minute Christmas presents or 
New Year presents. <laughs> we need cheering up in January when those those days are all so dark and cold. Well, look what we have here. <gasps> Lavin and Blue notebooks. <gasps> the notebook with Paul's logo at the bottom too and it's embossed on there you can see I think am I right Paul saying this is one signature so you've got all these pieces of paper there uh, if I take away the back so that clump and there's the linen thread, like a nice pale blue there. And look. look at that. And the covers, the leather covers, are in most beautiful tones of blue. So you've got, that's almost like a dark blue verging onto the teal, then a lighter blue. And then this one has almost got uh, a bit of green in. Oh, there you are. See, that looks, you can see that. But aren't they just. And they have plain cards, ca cartridge paper or a, a firmer cardstock. Oh, ASMR lovers. You're going to love that. So, thank you very much, Paul. They are wonderful. I'm going to put them in the shop and on sale on the website. So if you want a lavender and blue notebook, uh, I'm not sure actually if, if it'll get to you uh, in time for Christmas. Maybe if you're in the UK, uh, America, uh, and New Zealand or elsewhere, <laughs> definitely, definitely not. But as I say, maybe a present to yourself in January. Um, oh, it's my birthday in January, so <laughs> maybe a present to me <laughs> in January. So Paul, thank you very much. It's just wonderful. All, you know, I think I've said this many times. The, the people, the community in the village never cease to amaze me. Uh, and I keep meeting new people in the village too. It's, it's a big village, but I'm always meeting new people. But your talents just never cease to amaze me. I was chatting with a lovely lady today, June. Uh, she, uh, uh, I shouldn't say a lady's age, but she's in a, well in her 80s. <laughs> And she is just a phenomenal knitter. And she was in today. Stuart, I thought I'd just show you this. This is out of the new wool Rowan Tweed Haze, which we featured uh, on our last vlog in the shop. And she knitted so, uh, a, a Christmas present for her, for her uh, I think it was for her granddaughter, might even be great granddaughter. <laughs> and she bought it in, it was exquisite. Uh, phenomenal uh, and all in the village so uh, yes the, 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 the talent from you in the village and well our community wherever you are is amazing what you can do so Paul thank you very much really 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 a, a lovely treat and I also passed on a special present that you gave to Ting and to Anya uh, and, and they loved it. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, so I'm saying thank you on behalf of them too. Wonderful. Right. Yes. We, uh, <laughs> we have fun with this every vlog. It's that time where we just have a little bit of fun and uh, have a, a, a guess the year. Well, of course, it's a, a Christmassy. It's got to be a Christmas pattern. So take a look at this and guess the year of the pattern. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
too. <laughs> so that is mm, super chunky, I think. Yeah, that's super, super chunky yarn. Beautiful yarn, but look at that very modern, stylish Christmas sweater, wouldn't you say? Uh, I know over in America you have, is it what they call the ugly Christmas sweater? Um, I, I, I've seen a few patchwork quilts called uh, the ugly sweater, ugly Christmas sweater. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, it, it, it's, do, you, do you, do you, is it a craze you have to get your, your jumpers out? I know we, we love wearing our Christmas jumpers here, but uh, I think it's something in particular over with you in the States, isn't it? Let me know, or have I just made that up? But anyway, I, dig I digress. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so with that reindeer on there. What year do you think? Modern, how modern? 2000s? Late 90s? I'm looking at his hair. Looks very cold. <laughs> I'm going to go 2004. What are you going to go for? Mmm. Well, there we are. That's Guess the Year. We'll come back to it throughout the show and then I'll give you the answer towards the end. So the fabric lovers of you out there, you'll be pleased to know a brand new collection has flown into the shop. <laughs> now, Botanicals by Janet Clare from Moda has finally arrived. I remember choosing this fabric last November. It's that long, it's taken that long to get in. So to plan for this new collection for when it came in, uh, I wanted to do two things. I thought of doing one thing with my mum, with uh, uh, some sort of furniture involved for a window display. And then I thought, oh, do you know what? The second thing, I could go to RSPB Minsmere with Ting. <laughs> I thought it would be a great video for me and him to go to RSPB Minsmere to do some bird watching and to try and find the birds that were on the collection, see if we could find them. PB Minsmere and we're walking around and I think we've seen more people than birds and wildlife. It's like the M25, isn't it? Yeah, it's more of a tourist attraction than a nice. <laughs> Over there is the sea and we are going to go bathing. <laughs> I put my speedos on just in case. <laughs> to try and look for these birds that we've seen um, for the, on the botanicals collection that's just come in. I think we have a hard job. I think most of them have gone to Spain for the winter. I think so. <laughs> So we've just had our first experience of a hide. Our first hide experience. Well, one's been in a hide before. Have you? Oh yes. Well, that was my first time. Um, and I think I just saw mallard ducks. And seagulls. <laughs> I know, we jest, but I think there were loads of birds there. And there were, they were clearly pro bird watchers in that Twitches. hide. Tw oh, twitchers. Twitches. Oh, is that the word? Yeah. Some pro twitchers. 
looking out and the view was stunning as you could see um, and we could hear them say oh there's a a hoochama flip and there's a a thing of a bob and unfortunately i left my i spy book of birds at home so i feel i feel i'm losing out on identifying the actual variety can you remember those books i was always the, good the for a car journey. yeah absolutely with my grandparents in the back so we're now going we're on the trail um and there are a couple more highs to look at as we go round the oh Again. They're all taken off again. That's the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you enjoying your Sunday morning out looking at birds, Ting? Well, it'd be alright if we found some birds, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, I've known Ting for years. 20, 20 years. 20. 2001. One. At the same school. Teaching. Teaching, not... <laughs> I know we look young enough to have only just left. <laughs> Uh, I was drama and Ting was business studies. Yeah. And, and then, still is. <laughs> and still is, yes, but within a couple of years, uh, I got to head of drama and Ting was head of business studies. And it just all started from there. And then we found that we had similar interest in, in crafting and performing. Oh, hang on, Sir Walter Raleigh, oh, oh. I need you to lay your cape down. We've got a puddle. <laughs> I think we're going to have to switch oh, okay. routes. <laughs> Lost schools did musicals. Rather than doing a classic musical as such, I thought, well, you can't get any better than a good classic pantomime. British genre, hey? <laughs> Unlike anything. And, of course, you've got to have the, the pantomime day. And when I was at school, I, I, I think this way you learn a lot of these things from your own experiences. I played buttons and we had two teachers as the dames and, and it stuck with me that experience and um, I thought let's do it again so when I then as head of drama put on a pantomime we had the students as the characters and we thought we've got to have a teacher as the dame and here is the dame Widow Twanky now retired <laughs> no never Dick Whittington yeah I think she was Sarah in that one Sarah oh yes, that was a good one. You was uh, you had like the you were the chef. One scene of the chef, and you were baking. Yeah. Oh, it was just brilliant. And um, yes, so we've been taught many years. And then I just turned forty and, and um, set up the shop, which has now resulted in me looking for birds on a windswept <laughs> Suffolk beach so on a Sunday morning. A Love glorious it. Sunday morning, it's we should add. <laughs> All exhausted back in the car after that and we're going to see if we can tick off from the fabric collection so here it is so this is botanicals by Janet Clare what have we got on there well we've got a lot of what we didn't see Come on. but the only thing we did see was a chaffinch but I'm guessing they're quite common because we just saw it whilst and we saw about 12 <laughs> <laughs> and if this stands for gull I suppose that's gull we saw, oh, yes. we saw a billion of those. <laughs> we saw some birds flying around doing that, but I don't think they were swallows. No. I think they're definitely in Spain. So we saw a grand total of one, really, then. On the collection, On yeah. On the collection. Yeah. yeah. But from a distance, we probably saw uh, the avocets. We think it was a moorhen. And a moorhen. <laughs> lots of gulls, lots yes. of mallards. 
but it was lovely, really nice. And a great cup of tea and a, 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 a sausage bar <laughs> at the end of it, which is nice. Um, but beautiful views, really. Yeah, yeah. Just got to find a way home now uh, because it wasn't exactly the easiest no. find. It is the, the road takes you right to, towards the coast, and you're going through like forestry stuff. Aren't you? Yeah, but it was lovely. I hope you enjoyed it. See you again soon, everyone. So not much luck. <laughs> it was a great day, really good. Anyway, let's take a look at the collection closer. Look at that. It goes completely against my business focus this year. I've been really choosing fabrics uh, for kids, but I saw this and I just thought, well, Suffolk, RSPB Minsmere, there are going to be loads of bird watchers or, or twitchers about. They're going to love this. So I thought I'd buy pretty much a, a large part of the collection. So what have we got? Let's show you the main focus fabric, which is what basically inspired uh, me to go with Ting to RSPB Minsmere. Look at that. You then have two what they call wildflowers on a cream and then the wildflowers on like a, a beige tan background. And then we start going into more ditzy prints now, heading towards blenders. So we've got leaves, same again. I don't know why I bought three of these, but they were beautiful. Perhaps should have only got two. So trouble when you're on your own, you have no one to sort of have that chat with. And that's the one thing I do miss from my teaching days. I had, a, I was lucky to have a huge team, four. For drama, that's pretty, pretty huge. Most secondary schools, the drama teacher, the head of drama was on their own, and they might have had a part-time teacher, so one and a half. So for my school to have three full-time teachers and one part-time, I was very, very lucky. So in team meetings, we would be sharing ideas, bouncing off each other, uh, and we would just be going off on, on one, and ideas would flow and develop, and it was wonderful. You also then knew sometimes what would work and what didn't, because if you put forward an idea and your team were like, you yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, uh, there's no point running with that. If, if you three don't think it's any good, I'm not precious with my ideas. So I kind of miss that being on my own because um, maybe with these three, the light, the beige and the olive, maybe if I had a team, they would have gone, Stuart, I don't think you need all three. And that, it, and it just helps. So I, I do miss having that, just that conversation that conversation on on whether it's right or not. That you, and I know you, you you do learn at times to trust your gut, but but yeah, I, I just missed that. So I perhaps shouldn't have had three. But there we are. So they're the ditzy. They're like leaves, beautiful. And then one of my favourites actually from this collection is like the the journal effect, like it's in a diary. Scribbles notes. Beautiful. So I have that on the cream, and I have it on the on the the, the beige tanny sort of colour. And then we go to the blenders, and I chose two blenders: the cream and the beige again. Look at those. Very. Janet Clare style. If you're a big fan of Janet Clare, I think you would go, yes, that's a Janet Clare. And I didn't just stop there. <laughs> Got the jelly roll as well. I that mean, the jelly roll is adorable. How many of you have got jelly rolls that are so beautiful, they are just sat in your stash because you just can't, you just can't open them? Go on, put your hands up. Yeah, don't hide it. <laughs> look, see, look at all those hands going up. So many of you. Write in the comments below. Have you got a particular one, though, that you just know you'll never open? I know a couple of friends who have got some K-Facet 
jelly rolls and they just can't bear to open them. Uh, or some Island Batiks. Chip, have you got, how many of these have you got? Fizz, <laughs> your, your stash fizz with your, oh, I shouldn't say, your garage. Um, how many have you got of jelly rolls? It's difficult, isn't it? Because they are beautiful, but fabric is there to be used. So my New Year's resolution to you all, I'm going to enforce it on you all, to open up those jelly rolls that you just haven't used because you, they're just so beautiful and use it. Get that fabric and enjoy it and see it done and out made. Yes? Layer cakes. Are you a fan of the layer cake? Come on, patchworkers and quilters, comment and let me know. 10 inch, I think I'm now more of a fan of the layer cake than I am of charm packs. Because I think the value for money for all those 10 inch squares for the price, I think is incredible value for money. You can get a lot out of all those 10 inch squares. So tell me what your favorite is, 10 inch square or a five inch square charm pack. And I, and I, I shouldn't use that word charm pack. It's like sellotape, isn't it? Sellotape or Hoover, it's a brand name. So pre-cut two and a half inch, pre-cut five inch or pre-cut 10 inch. Should use the general terms and not be mode eccentric. So let us know in the comments, but for me, 10 inch squares, if I'm going to use a pre-cut. But yes, New Year's resolution. Let's get those charms or let's get those two and a half inch strips out of the cupboard and use it. Come on, let's see that fabric. Let it breathe and, and, and show it off. And let's have it in the gallery, hey? Next year, next year. Right, talking about year, let's take another look at Guess the Year and see if you can finalize that year. So we're over the halfway mark. Come on. Go get yourself a little a little wee nip or something. I've just got a sherry, so <laughs> what's your favourite? Is it a whiskey? Is it a Bailey's? Ooh. Let me know. Do you know the comments are going to be full of <laughs> so many things to talk about. Right, let's have a look at this year. Ah, oh, right. Yes, I still think, I still, I'm still going to go for early 2000s. Yeah, he does look very cold. Right, I'm locking in with 2004. Lock in with your guess and I'll tell you at the end of the show. <laughs> Ta-da! I have cut it and there is a zip in place. If I show you a close up. So there's my zip. Just stitched in. I might put a facing over that and cover that up, but there it is. Stitch in, it's fabulous, really pleased. But I want it a little bit longer. I have gone off piste. Now I know it happens a lot. I know many of you, when you're knitting, you adjust it to yourself and, and you go, oh, I think I'm gonna do this. Oh, I think I'm gonna do that. And you, and you change it and, and we do that. And there is no problem with that. Um, so this is the intersection pattern by uh, Rosso Cardinale and it goes to there. So that is pattern up to there. But I wanted it to be a zipper where you go zip and it comes up to there. 
I know. <laughs> I think it's because where it finished, it was too, it was too much of a, of a boat neck. So the cardigan, when I tried it on, it finished, so this is quite close what I'm wearing here now, but the intersections finished sort of about there. Um, and it would have almost slipped off my shoulders actually. So I thought, no, 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 I want it to be a proper cardigan where you zip it up and it goes right up there. So I had to make bits up, so I've made it up. So I did a yellow and a blue, then a gray and a yellow, and then I went, <laughs> I thought, oh, that's, it's the kind of idea of, of reducing it, fading it out. So I thought I'll then just do grey with that classic, I don't know, has that got a name? Can anyone let me know? I wonder if it's got an actual name, but you can see I've done some decreases there to, to pull it in. But this bit, technically, this grey bit will be that bit there. So as I say, I now need a zip long, longer. That zip's got to carry on up and up and up and up. So that's got to come out and sew a new zip in. That will be my Christmas project. As well as a ball of Lang yarns, which I think on the last vlog I said was German. Completely got that wrong. They're a Swiss company. I've learned something today. So I have got Lang Merino 150, which is a four ply. And I've got German yarn, <gasps> crazy Zauber ball. Look at those greys. Light greys, dove greys, charcoal greys, almost black. Putting those two together because I'm starting the High Wire by Stephanie Erin. <sighs> yes, that's going to be my Christmas chain on. Can't wait to see what these two are going to look like. Are you going to cast on a pattern from Murit? It was from the new crochet magazine, Murit, from the Autumn and Winter book one. Um, uh, let me know if you are. There is a hashtag to join along if you are making something from book one, the Autumn and Winter one, book one of Murit. I'm going to be using that hashtag and I will be doing that over Christmas and over the coming months. I've really enjoyed getting into my crochet again and chatting with you uh, because many of you have enjoyed seeing more of the crochet content. Uh, Gordon, it's been great chatting to you and new subscriber David Browning in particular has been showing me his crochet. Check it out, he's got a great YouTube channel where he shows off his makes and he talks to fellow yarn makers and celebrates the work they're doing. Uh, and talking about celebration, I think it's time we did that very same thing. So yes, let's get a bit comfy. Ooh, I'll stoke the fire up, settle back, get your, your, your drink out, your tipple, and let's enjoy the amazing work from you lot in the gallery.
if you are posting a picture of your finished object on Instagram, uh, if you could just add our hashtag, the wool patch to your list of hashtags i could just add us to the bottom that would be great and i could find it if not as i say you can email me uh, to the address below or you can dm me on instagram and uh, and i can add it to the next gallery it would be lovely to see how amazing was that and how many projects annie how, how many finished objects have you got in there and and fizz the lavender blue stunning right I think it's time to give you an answer to guess the year. Right, are you ready for it? The year of this pattern is 2011. <laughs> I went too far out. It's a pattern by Martin Story, and it was in a knitting book by Rowan called Dalesman. But there are some wonderful patterns there. You can find it on Ravelry, you can find it on Rowan, and I'll put all the, the links below. If you got it right, brilliant. If you were one year out, ooh, so close. And if you were wrong, well, there'll always be a next time. to go and see my mum uh, and do a project with her. I often go over every Monday when the shop's closed and I said oh why don't we make something to show off this wonderful new collection and my mum has been getting into upcycling furniture recently uh, and uh, she said oh I've got two bedside tables that we're going to go to the tip. Uh, we could we could do those. So we had great fun over a couple of Mondays, not only painting them, but then putting these stunning stencils on and making two brand new bedside tables that were going to the tip that ended up looking beautiful in the shop with birds. <laughs> How cool were they? 
And how clever are those stencils? It reminded me of the old fashioned tattoos that we used to have as kids when you would then, you know, you rub them on and then take them off and feel all cool. But that's all they are in essence. And you can get so many different types. And my mum is now getting into this and she's selling them on her little shop that she's got. Uh, but you can get all different types. You can get horses on, you can get chickens on. You can see, you see the ones that we had there with birds on all sorts and you just rub them on your furniture and you can put them on the front of drawers you can put them on the side of cupboards like we did uh it's just phenomenal what you can do with them um and uh so we put them in the shop and i thought well i'll put them in the shop and i'll put a price tag on them as well you, you never know if someone wants to buy them they can um and this idea of upcycling and and reusing and passing on uh, for a whole new generation maybe to to enjoy um as well as showing off all the uh, the, the the botanicals fabric so i made a lovely display out of it and yes I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> you could, you know what's coming already. Within two days, the, uh, the the bedside tables were sold. They've gone off and they're being enjoyed by someone new. So, so two bedside tables that were going to go to the tip have now been regenerated, upcycled, new lease of life, and are being enjoyed all over again. So it, it was wonderful to do, and I got to spend some quality time with Mum making and creating together. It was really, really good fun. <laughs> Look at that, so nearly done. This is my Baker Boy cap by Adam James Brooks. Sewing bee Adam, I know, I know. Look, I am thrilled with it. So pleased, all I need, I mean that's not bad is it? My junctions, almost, but it doesn't matter anyway because the covered button is going to go over there and that's the last thing I've got to do. I've made the covered button, so all I've got to do is pop it on the top. But I got a bit stuck. So of course, who do I call? <laughs> Carol Elaine, master tailor, couturier. Yes, I call Carol. In fact, well, we're doing a show. Have you seen our show? Have you checked it out? It's called So What? And it is literally a conversational sewing show where me and Carol talk. And we talk from fundamentals, which was what we talked about this week, the thimble. Last week, we talked about thread and tension on your machine. And we've talked about fabrics, we've talked about winter wools, and it changes. We've got one coming up very soon. Well, I say very soon, coming up next year on Jersey, because I know many people want to know more about Jersey. And uh, I asked her, I said, Carol, I've got the covered button, but I don't know how to fix it because the covered button has a little divot on. Um, and uh, and I know it's probably obvious, but for me, beginner sewer, it just, I d didn't know how to do it. And she said, put the divot bit, the shank as it is, in that seam, in that seam, uh, and then uh, stitch it down. Uh, and she told me how to do that, and that was in our last show. So I'm going to have that done ready for Christmas, but. Do you want to see it on? <laughs> All right, the <me> old china. <laughs> Isn't it great? Can you see? Papers, papers, read all about it. Come and get your apples and pears. The question is, do you purposely have the top going up or do you sew that bit down? Peaky Blinders fan? I haven't watched it. <laughs> I can hear you all shouting at me now. What? Are they down? Um, so I'll have a think about that. Or do I have it on the wonk like that? <laughs> there. But you can see, they are, that's better. There, look. So, but, but I think some people, I've heard some people before did they do it on the sewing bee? They might have actually done it on the sewing bee where they sew that bit down. But you can see there's a bit of a flap there. 
that when I do it like that, I feel a bit like a, is it like a train conductor? Bus conductor from the olden days? Yep. Gonna have your tickets, please. Tickets. Yep. Tickets, please, sir. Yep. <laughs> so, you want to go to the uh, uh, Whitechapel? That's £5.50. Oh, no, it was no. Five shillings. <laughs> there we are. The Baker Boy Cap by Adam James Brooks. Cheers, Adam. Love it. Are you still awake? Hello, wakey wakey, it's the end, it's over. <laughs> That's an hour gone by. It's been wonderful talking to you. Uh, we've talked an awful lot about fabric and about yarn and all the different projects from knitting and crochet. It's been, it's been really good. If I don't see you before, have a happy, happy holiday season. Enjoy the new year. And don't forget, you've got a new year's resolution already. <laughs> and I can't wait to see you in 2022 for more wonderful vlogs. Cheers, everyone. Good health to you all. Bye-bye.